Today we're going to talk about 3D printers, specifically for fishing lure makers. After my last video showing my 3D printed soft plastic mold, I got a ton of questions from people that generally evolved around what 3D printer should I buy? And that's really like the third question you should ask when you're thinking about getting into this. So I put together this two part series on 3D printers for lure makers, whether that be soft plastics or hard baits. So you can get an idea of what you're getting into before you just go off and buy it. I made it two parts for a specific reason. The first part, I'm gonna talk about kind of the systems that you're gonna be dealing with, software, and kind of the, the things that you're gonna have to gear up for before you even buy a 3D printer. And the second part, if I didn't scare you away in the first part, is gonna be about what 3D printer you should get. So let's get going. Okay, a quick bit of terminology here that we'll get to before we start, just so you understand. We'll go into these more in detail in part two. You have two types of 3D printers really in the home uh, enthusiast market. You have an FDM printer, which takes a filament, extrudes it, it's, it's a plastic filament typically, extrudes it out of a nozzle and builds that up in layers to produce your final part. More recently, we have SLA printers, also known as resin printers. I just typically call them resin printers. And that takes a vat of resin and hits it with UV light, which causes it to cure and puts a pattern on there so it cures in a certain pattern and builds up those layers to produce your model. So typically, a resin 3D printer will give you higher resolution more detail, quote unquote, a better print than an FDM printer. But FDM printers are also capable of producing pretty good detail and they're a lot cheaper. But we'll get into all those details in part two. So we're gonna cover a couple of things here before we even get into what 3D printer you should buy. And that's really an overview of what you're getting yourself into. So one of the first things to understand is these are manufacturing machines. Uh, yes, they are for home use, but they're still machines that require maintenance and you're going to have to be willing to kind of fiddle around with them to get them working. You, you're going to have to eventually replace parts on them. No matter what printer you get, uh, you might want to do some upgrades. You're going to have some general tuning involved. So it's, it's a machine that needs maintenance and work. It's not quite as bad as a boat, but it kind of is pretty close sometimes. So the second thing here is these are machines that you don't really want to be running inside your house for the most part, unless you have a lot of ventilation in a certain area. It's just like pouring soft plastics, right? Doing these processes, they generate a lot of noise and a lot of inorganic and organic chemicals and, and smells that go on here that you probably don't want to be breathing in and putting into the rest of your house, right? So you need a shop area with adequate ventilation. If you're already pouring soft plastics and you're doing it safely, you, you probably already have this covered, but it's important to note that you know, you're know you not gonna throw this thing on your desk in your office and 3D print from it for the most part. And you're gonna need to learn some software. So at the very least, you're going to need to learn a piece of software called a slicer. This is the software that takes a 3D model and literally slices it down simulates the path that the 3D printer is going to take and then spits that out into a language called G-code that the printer can understand to actually print your object. So this is uh, a little bit tricky to get used to. It's gonna take time, you're gonna need to learn it. You're gonna need to learn what your printer likes, what your printer doesn't like. The settings change depending on what material you're printing, whether that's PLA for FDM printers or some specialized resin for your resin 3D printer these things take a little bit of time to master and you will have failures and you're gonna to need to learn it. So for FDM printers, kind of the gold standard is Cura. Most people use that. It has a pretty good community around settings for certain 3D printers and it's relatively straightforward to use. Again, uh, we'll get more in detail on part two about these, but if you wanna go check it out, look at it, look at the interface to kind of see like, okay, I can handle that or not, there's a link in the description below for Cura. Again, it's free, you can download it. For resin 3D printers, there's one kind of main that's included or recommended for most resin 3D printers and that's called Cheetubok. It is okay, it's not that great. Now the last piece of software we're gonna to touch is one that I think a lot of people tend to gloss over uh, and that is uh, CAD or sculpting programs. If you want to create your own custom lure, you're going to need to either A, be able to use one or more of these programs, or two, you're going to need to know somebody who does. 
So on the CAD side, you have Fusion 360, which uh, has a ton of support in the community. You can get a ton of videos on how to use it. Um, it's free for home use. There's a paid version as well. There's also Tinkercad you might've heard of. That's an in the browser CAD software, super easy to use. Again, links to all this stuff will be down in the description below. FreeCAD, SolidWorks, you have a lot of CAD programs. So the main difference between um, a CAD program and a sculpting program is really CAD programs uh, have kind of a, an origin around engineering and manufacturing, drafting for architecture. So they very much like very precise measurements and dimensions and it is a little more difficult to create an organic shape, you know, with lots of curves and stuff. Not impossible, right? I mean, I've, I've created lures in Fusion 360 for sure, but they, they tend to kind of fall down and become much more difficult when you want to do a little bit more creative stuff. They're great at, at basic forms, but you know, I want to put scales, I want to put eyes, I want to do something kind of cool, cool fin. They're just a, a little more cumbersome. It's not impossible, but there's a, a huge learning curve uh, to get up there. Now, with sculpting programs, it's, it's really like their their whole kind of uh, ideas. You know, you start with a hunk of clay, and you have these tools, and you move this clay around. Uh, so it's very much very organic. You can create really cool shapes, really cool levels of detail with just you know your mouse, uh, or you know if you want to go with a pen on a tablet. You know, you can do some really, really cool organic shapes. Obviously, you know, where they start to fall down is in the precision, right? So if you want a lure that is exactly, you know, 3.75 inches long, that's gonna be a little more difficult to constrain that in a sculpting type program as opposed to CAD, where CAD, you just like literally draw a line, 3.75 inches, boom, there's my shape and, and away I go. So you'll probably maybe end up using both of them if you wanna create your own lures. So just be prepared for that, right? That's a huge learning curve, right? I'm a giant nerd and you know, I'd say you know every day for a few weeks, I was watching a few different Fusion 360 videos to get the basics. I'll link to a few other channels to do lure design in Fusion 360 so you can kind of get the idea behind it. Blender has uh, similar tutorials you can watch, but you're in for a learning curve if you want to design your own lures. Now, I know what you're saying. I don't want to learn no software. Yeah, I get it, dude. You don't you don't got time for that mess. The other alternative is downloading pre-made models off of the internet, right? And so there's a, a website called Thingiverse, which I've downloaded models for. You can download, you know, straight up lure models for, you know, like stick baits, you can download soft plastic lure molds. You can download mold masters where you know you print them out and then you pour silicone over the top and make your own mold. The, there's not a huge variety of them out there, but there is some and they're pretty cool. You can download the actual mold that I used in my last video from um, Catchco. I, I'll put a link to his video in the description below. He gave that away for free. I'm going to start producing a lot of models for fishing lures as well this year that I'll be um, that I'll be either giving away for free or selling. I haven't quite figured that out yet. Probably for free though. There's other places you can get them, but if you wanna make your own, you're gonna need to have someone with access to a CAD program. You can use a website like Fiverr where you hire someone to do this for you. I'm actually gonna be doing a Fiverr lure challenge coming up in the next few episodes. We're gonna see if I can uh, get somebody to produce a custom lure for me on Fiverr. That'll be pretty cool. If you wanna see that, make sure you hit the subscribe button and, that, and ding that bell notification so you'll, you'll know when it comes out. If you're not willing to either learn a CAD program or a sculpting program or pay somebody to do this kind of design work for you, you're probably not gonna be very excited and get a lot of use out of your 3D printer. Yes, you can download stuff, yes, you can print stuff, but you know, you can buy, you know, swim bait molds for way less than the printer, right? So to give you a rough idea before we go too far, again, we'll go into more detail in the second part of the series here. An FDM printer, you know, you're looking at roughly 300 bucks to 400 bucks. I have a, an Ender 5, which is about 400 bucks these days. If you're gonna go with a resin printer that you can probably do molds out of, um, my, I have an Elegoo Saturn, which is uh, roughly $500. You can get a smaller version, the Mars, for roughly, I think, $300. You can get some kick-ass molds for that price. You can probably get a couple of kick-ass molds for that price. Not to mention the material used to print, the resins, 
all of the kind of extra stuff that you have to deal with uh, when you're 3D printing it on your own. You can get a lot of great material and shoot a lot of great baits without going down this path. So I really only recommend this path if you want to create stuff, stuff. If you want to create lures that don't exist today, right? You want, you have this great idea for some kind of crazy swim bait that no one else knows about, uh, then you might want to get into it. Or if you want to be able to make other stuff besides fishing lures, right? So I have a video where I make a uh, kayak push pole handle. You can make all kinds of cool stuff around the house. You can make flower pots. You can do all kinds of cool stuff with 3D printers. So if you have an interest in 3D printing that's a apart from the actual fishing lure stuff, sure, by all means. But if you only want to produce fishing lures or molds, you know, you really need to understand what you're getting yourself into before you jump in. Okay guys, if I didn't scare you away, here's the part two video right here. And if you wanna see the video where I pour into a 3D printed mold, it's right here. Thanks for watching everybody. Tight lines.